All right, I am seriously about to bring somebody up here who is a complete badass, and she's followed by other badasses. I'd like to welcome to the stage somebody who has done, oh, hold on, excuse, she has won 11 Ironman competitions. She's competed in 33 of them. It's like a two and a half mile swim, 112 mile bike ride, and a marathon all together. She's done it 33 times, 111, a Pan Am Games winner, and a cystic fibrosis patient advocate. Please welcome to the stage, Lisa Bentley. Thank you very much, and I'm quite grateful to be here tonight. It's a privilege and an honor to be in a room filled with hope because that's what this really is, isn't it? It is a room full of hope. Congratulations. I've been blessed with two gifts in my life, the gift of sport and the gift of cystic fibrosis. And you rarely ever hear those two words being referred to together as gifts because you'd think, well, how could you possibly excel at sport if you had cystic fibrosis? And how would sport be good for cystic fibrosis? How could they both be gifts? And yet, for me, I can't imagine my life without one or the other. Maybe I would have won more races or been more successful if I didn't have cystic fibrosis, but I wouldn't have the fulfillment in my life that I have experienced with that gift, with that gift of CF. Cystic fibrosis is a genetic disease and it affects the lungs, creating a, a lot of mucus in the lungs, becomes a paradise for bacteria, which can then turn into infection after infection, turn into bad lungs, and then result in a transplant. So you need your lungs for sport. You need your lungs to race an Ironman, and, and yet I feel blessed. I was diagnosed when I was in my 20s, and of course, at that stage, I was indestructible. Away at university, sure, I had been sick as a kid, but that was always dismissed as allergies, asthma, winter. I'm from Canada, after all. <laughs> but I don't really ever remember missing out on anything growing up, so I guess it was a bit of a blessing that I wasn't diagnosed. And then I took up the sport of triathlon, and I don't remember missing training or racing because of sickness. I had great support from my doctors, and I was on antibiotics. But I always had this mission statement that I would just do the best that I could do with my deck of cards. And if that deck of cards involved antibiotics and coughing and infection, well, then that was my deck of cards. I would do the best I could with it. And I was blessed to win my first Ironman in the year 2000. And it was after that time that I, I sort of said to myself, you know, there needs to be more. I want to keep racing. It's my career. It's my passion. But there has to be more to it than just crossing the finish line first or second or third. And it was then that I realized that gift. The gift of sport had been so incredible in my life. It had helped me build self-esteem and confidence. It had made me happy, it had brought me tears as well, but it brought me so much joy. It, it made me who I was. And yet, cystic fibrosis was going to give me an avenue to share that with people, that I could share that with people with CF and say, hey, th there's hope. This isn't a death sentence. Get out there, get moving. You don't have to do a triathlon, you don't even have to run. Just go out and walk and live and breathe. And at that moment, I realized that gift. And I realized that little bit of hope. You know, I mean, this room is filled with it, but you meet one person with your disease that's healthy, and that's hope. It doesn't matter if it's an anomaly. And I realized that I was like that for people that were really sick with CF. For that parent that was just given birth to a child with CF, if they saw that there was people that led healthy lives, they'd have hope. And I met this woman in New Zealand one year when I was racing there. Her name was Tracy Richardson. And she had two children with CF that were very, very sick, and she felt helpless. 
So she decided that she was gonna race Ironman New Zealand, not to raise money for CF, but to raise money so that kids with CF could do sport. Because at the end of the day, after you're paying out, medicine, uh, paying out money for medicine, et cetera, there's very little money to put your kids into sport. So she wanted to raise money so that kids with CF could have access to sport. So she went on to do Ironman New Zealand. And what happened after that was the big Ironman is called Ironman Hawaii. It's the, one, the, the world championships. And it's on NBC. And they asked her to come and do this race. And they said, we're going to make it a fundraiser. We're going to highlight you, the mother, with two kids with CF, that's fighting for their survival. And we're gonna highlight Lisa, myself, who's racing Ironman Hawaii, trying to win the darn thing, and she's got cystic fibrosis. And I remember preparing for that race and thinking, okay, this is my fantasy race, this is my dream. I am going to go into that race, have the race of my life, win the race, it's gonna be all over TV, and people are gonna realize that CF is this important, hopeful, wonderful thing that they can dedicate themselves to and we can fundraise and they're gonna, it's gonna get more awareness and we're gonna find a cure. And so I had this fantasy and then the week of the race I got sick. And I felt pretty sorry for myself. I called my hospital in Toronto and said I'm sick and they got me on medicine and you know I was in the shape of my life and I could really win this thing and, and I was sad. And I remember it was two days before the event and I went to this media event with Tracy promoting our cause, promoting cystic fibrosis. And I saw her face and I, I had some tears in my eyes and I said to myself, shame on you, Lisa Bentley. Shame on you. You're worried that you might not win the Hawaii Ironman and she has two children who could die from cystic fibrosis. Shame on you. And it was in that instant that I realized that I was the luckiest person on earth. I got to race the Hawaii Ironman World Championships. I got to feel that pain. What a privilege. And I made a promise to myself that I would be the best darn person on that start line with a chest infection. I was going to be the <laughs> best darn person on that start line with cystic fibrosis. And I got into that race, and you know, I had the race of my life. I was so happy, nothing bothered me. The wind didn't bother me, the heat didn't bother me, racing for nine hours didn't bother me. I didn't cough once, and I was so sick the days before. I crossed that finish line in fourth place, which I really think was the race of my life. But the best thing was that Tracy's mission in doing that race, because she did that race, she raised $800,000 for cystic fibrosis and for kids to do sport. So my goal for everybody in this room and for everyone that we're honoring tonight, for everyone, is to have that hope. And I think you do. And that everybody, with whatever they have, whatever rare disease it is, whatever baggage you have, that everyone does the best they can with their deck of cards. You can do some pretty amazing things. And tonight, I have the honor of honoring four people that have done just that. They have absolutely done the best they can with their deck of cards. So let's meet our first activist, Noah Coughlin. Noah, Noah was inspired by a family. I still have to talk about you. <laughs> Noah was inspired by a family whose child was diagnosed with Batten's disease. He saw the courage and the strength of that child and family, and he knew he wanted to do something to raise awareness for this disease. And his something just happened to be running across the continent, and he didn't just do it once, he did it three times, finishing just this month. And each day, 
he would raise awareness for a particular child or family with a specific disease and would meet with state legislators and local government to build a strong voice for those affected by rare diseases. Noah is now working on a documentary called Run for Rare, which will be due out in 2017. Please join me in honoring Noah Coughlin for his brave feats of courage. Thank you so much. A great speech. Wow, I learned so much. Thank you so much. Well, good evening, everybody. Thank you. It is an honor to actually stand here on this stage and hold this award. Uh, this award is less about me and more about you. The uh, entire series of runs across America was it revolved around the well. The first two revolved around the Batten disease community. There's a there's a couple here, Tracy and Jen Van Houten. They don't have to stand up, but if you see them, tell them thank you. I mean, they were the glue that held this whole ship together, uh, inspiring people. So for this third run that just happened. I said, you know what, there's so many other amazing families and children in the rare disease community. I'm up for one more run. Let's, let's go from the, <laughs> the Statue of Liberty to San Diego. Hey, it takes about four months, so it's, you can't do it in one day. But, you know, you got to survive the polar vortex, then tornado alley, then the heat of Arizona. Hell is a real place, and it's called Phoenix, okay? <laughs> it's 118 degrees, so... Uh, <laughs> Anyways, there's just some weather extremes, just to let everybody know. But it's, uh, it was an amazing experience. We live in a beautiful country. There's a lot of amazing people out there. The media might not report it all the time, but there are amazing stories happening in every state and every city. Uh, just kind people who are pulling over, many of which are veterans. If you're a veteran in the room, thank you so much for everything you've done. If you're a veteran... I wanted to make this really brief, which I will. Um, I did carry the American flag. I put it on the stroller that I pushed across America. And when the veterans who have served in many of our wars saw that they did pull over, everybody from World War II to Vietnam to our current conflicts, and they just want to say thanks. I was not a soldier, but it was a different way of serving the country. And it was just amazing to see the public's reaction to going through anywhere from an urban to a rural neighborhood to anywhere in between, and, and, and seeing the reaction of the flag. You couldn't go one mouth without someone honking or waving. Um, but the intention was to get that local child or adult who's affected by a rare disease on the 5 o'clock news, on the local newspaper, and you got to put a human face on these rare diseases. Um, that was the one thing I felt I could contribute to. I did survive, obviously, from coast to coast. Some of you saw the story uh, almost... I, some days were pretty close to not, not making it, but I, I made it, so it's all good. But thank you for the award. Where's Nicole Boyce? Nicole, thank you so much, wherever you're at. You and your team have done an amazing thing here tonight for the, uh, I don't know how many times in a row, years in a row, but I could talk for eight hours, but I don't think I've ever liked that. Global Genes, thank you. Rare Disease Community, thank you. This award is for you, and uh, there will not be a fourth run, but there will be a documentary next year. So thank you very much. And now let's meet another patient doing their best with their deck of cards. Courtney Midkiff has dedicated himself to raising funds and awareness for Fabry's disease research by walking across the United States in 2014 from March to September, celebrating his 24th birthday. He has Fabry's disease, and he did that incredible walk. And he did it alone. He camped at night by himself. He cooked his meals. He carried his gear in a baby jogging stroller. And he met other Fabry sufferers along the way. And he shared his message to never be defined by the disease. When he arrived in Arizona on August 4th, 2013, the mayor announced it to be Fabry's Disease Day. 
He has also been acknowledged as one of Men's Health Magazine's 100 Everyday Hero. Courtney, you are more than an everyday hero. You are a brave feats of courage hero. Please join me in honoring Courtney Midkiff for his brave feats of courage. Uh, this is cool. Thank you, everybody, for having me. Um, thank you, obviously, to Gobble Jeans and Nicole and Amy for answering my hundred emails to them over the past couple weeks, just making sure I had everything in order before I got here. And thank you to my family, my mom and dad and brother, for I basically just having my back when I told them I was going to walk across the country, and they were like, all right, yeah, <laughs> have fun. And uh, thank you, everybody here. I appreciate it. This is super cool. Thanks. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Our next honoree is John Maidment. He was diagnosed with alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency at 10 years of age. His grandmother and his father both have the disease which affects the lungs and the liver, and there is no cure. In 2014, when he was 18, he set out to hike the 2,200-mile 2 Appalachian Trail to raise awareness for the disease. He carried a flag with the names of alpha angels, those who had passed away from the disease. His goal was to raise $10,000, but he actually went on to raise $30,000 and touched the hearts of everyone he met. <laughs> Unfortunately, John isn't here tonight because of illness, but let's have a big applause for him as we honor him with his brave feats of courage. And lastly, we get to meet our last hero, doing the very best he can with his deck of cards. Bonner Paddock has cerebral palsy, and he wasn't diagnosed till later, and he didn't actually really face up to it right away, but when a friend's young son died from the disease, he knew he had to do more. Well, he's the first person with, with cerebral palsy who's done two incredible feats, which even one would be incredible. He's climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, and he's raced in the Ironman World Championships in Hawaii. It's pretty amazing. I think his goal is to lead life to the fullest. He's certainly doing that, and to raise money for special needs children. He's a living example of never shying away from challenge and always being the best he can be with his disease. Please join me in honoring Bonner Paddock for his brave feats of courage. Thank you very much. Um, First, I want to thank Global Genes, Angie, Nicole. I had the tremendous honor of being the opening keynote on Thursday for those that you were there, and it's powerful to be in a room with all these amazing people and that they ask me to come up on stage and talk about and share my experiences. And I just never, ever would have ever imagined that they were nice enough to buy copies of my book, that the line wrapped around the building and went out the door and all these people that are patient advocates and are suffering from their diseases would stand their line patiently. Some had to have chairs just to stand in line because they couldn't stand. That's humbling. It's amazing. It's an honor to be here tonight. It's an honor to be in this room with so many people. To get this award, I am humbled, but I really don't honestly deserve it just myself. There's actually 
two people here tonight that are um, at the table that I'm at that I really want to say a special thank you to. One is Sam George. Um, he doesn't know it, but he is absolutely a huge inspiration to me, the challenges that he's gone through. He's technically probably not supposed to be even living at this juncture and to have him here and uh, I'm honored to have him on my foundation board. So Sammy, thank you for being such an inspiration to me. And the second person here tonight that I'd love to say thank you to is my oldest brother. And for 30 years, I was absolutely ashamed of having cerebral palsy. I cringed that if anybody could figure out that I had CP based on the way that I walked, I thought that they would not like me. They would not include me in things. And ultimately, I put myself on my own island of what I call the Bonner pity, pity party. And at the end of the day, I made those challenges on myself. And for that, I am deeply know I have missed so many great things in life. And to see so many inspirational people come up here tonight and share their amazing story and be so proud of who they are, you are amazing because we all should be proud of who we are. We should all be proud of the gifts that we have been given in this life. And for 30 years, I had it totally backwards. And for the last 10 years and the honor to go out and re represent and try to hopefully inspire many people to utilize to the maximum everything that we've been given in our life, I hope that I can continue to do that. And I hope to be uh, an inspiration for myself and everybody else going forward. So thank you very much for having me in this honor. Thank you very much for honoring our brave feats of courage. I think there's a lot of brave feats of courage happening out in our audience. Thank you for being hopeful and keep on supporting this great cause. Thank you. I think I speak for everybody in here that was at the uh, keynote opening on Thursday that Bonner really truly is just an unbelievable person. I mean, really, that was an eye-opening experience. Thank you, Bonner. Thank you to all of you guys.